hand, hand some papers out here. Okay, if you don't already have a Magnificat for March, I have a few extras up here. You'll notice um, that they have, they have, you have two books in here. There's a Holy Week one, and there's a March one. Okay, so in the Catholic Church, Holy Week uh, is the week before Easter. That whole week leading up to Easter is called Holy Week, where Jesus goes through his passion, he goes through um, uh, his betrayal, um, he's crucified, and then eventually we get to um, his, his death and resurrection. And so anyway, that whole week's Holy Week, and we have a special book for that week. So yeah, feel free to grab one. <clears throat> you guys are probably talking about the talk a little bit. Does anybody have any false God they recognize in their own life from what he, Father Curtis was talking about? You have one? <laughs> what was one that stuck out to you, Mike? Hmm. Uh, unmovable. He, he's there. Yeah. I, hate, I think of the drill sergeant a lot, I think. Like, I need to do this, I need to do this. I got a lot, a lot on my plate. Um, he's just constantly moving me. Um, man, it's just so relatable. Now, that's something that you want to take home. Like, like he was saying, you want to first know what that false God is in your life. Then you take on the action that, okay, now I know the problem. Where do I go to attack it? Right? Um, maybe sponsors can help you with that. Okay, something you can talk about. Um, okay, does everybody have a paper? For, for notes. I don't know why I'm putting this up. Does anybody have their litany for St. Joseph? If I don't have mine. Whoops. You have an extra? I was going to see if we had one to pull up here. Does every table have one? I don't know what happened. Okay, um, that's okay if you don't have one. I can kind of lead you on the responses, okay? Because the first few are have mercy on us, and then it's pray for us all the way through. Okay, so we can pray it um, without all having a copy. Name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be after me for these first three. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Jesus, hear us. Jesus, graciously hear us. So the response here is have mercy on us. God, the Father of heaven. God, the Son, and Redeemer of the world. God, the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God, Holy Mary, Saint Joseph, renowned offspring of David, light of patriarchs, spouse of the mother of God, chaste guardian of the virgin, foster father of the son of God, diligent protector of Christ, head of the holy family, Joseph most just, Joseph most chaste, Joseph most prudent, Joseph most strong, Joseph most obedient, Joseph most faithful, mirror of patience, lover of poverty, model of artisans, glory of home life, guardian of virgins, pillar of families, solace of the afflicted, pray for us, hope of the sick, pray for us. Patron of the dying, terror of demons, protector of Holy Church. All three of these are different, so if you know it, you can respond. Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. He made him the Lord of his household. 
Together, if you have it, let us pray. O oh God, in your ineffable providence, you are pleased to choose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother. Grant, we beg you, we may be worthy to have him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Matthew. Okay, first order of business tonight before we uh, go into a short little lesson on uh, sin is the scrutinies this Sunday, our first scrutiny. It'll be at 1130 Mass. Okay, so as I kind of put on here, the purpose of the scrutinies is not, uh, you know, we use it like a bad way in, in culture, that, that word scrutinize, you're being criticized, right? Uh, no, the purpose of this is, is like a, a pre-cleansing before baptism. Um, and if you're already baptized, it's to remind you of that baptism and to call, the, call that presence into your soul. Okay, and so um, the purpose I put on the, on the sheet here is to deliver the elect from the power of sin and Satan. Okay, if you're not baptized, you are vulnerable to the powers of Satan. What's that mean? It means that you're more readily drawn to sin, more readily drawn into slavery. Okay, baptism sets us free allows us to have a power over that, that sin, over, that, over the evil that uh, seeks to claim us. Okay, so to deliver the elect from the power of sin and Satan, protect them against temptation, and give them the strength in Christ. Okay, it's all preparing your soul for baptism. Okay, and what is that? We come to a deeper understanding of what baptism is. Every day, everybody that is baptized is coming to a new understanding of what's happened to them because it's, it's so beautiful. Uh, and so involved in the scrutiny is an exorcism, okay? Not a major exorcism like you've seen in the movies. Okay, different. This is called a minor exorcism. Okay, minor exorcism is a prayer that is casting out evil in our life. Okay, um, any, any ordained person, a priest or deacon, can, can do uh, an, or, an exorcism, okay, a minor exorcism. Um, okay, so the scrutiny on, um, on Sunday, it's very simple. I want to walk you just through it. Sit in the same spots you sat in for the right of elect, the right of election, okay? Um, we'll have those, you know, reserved for you. Um, and after the homily, Father Derek will be celebrating Mass. I'll, I'll be gone, actually. Um, I'll be watching you online. After the homily, uh, Father Derek will call you forward, elect of God, praying for the Easter Vigil, please come forward. And you just kind of file out in the order that you did, um, that, you, that you left your pew last time. So the front, inside would start on both sides. And you, you just would file around Father along that front step. And, and once everybody's along the front step, catechumens of Candace, at the step, sponsors, if, if, you're, if they're with you, will be behind you, a hand on your shoulder. And then um, you'll all kneel down together once everybody's up there on that front step. If you have, um, you know, difficult bad knees or, you know, whatever, you can stay standing or we can give you a pad, um, but, you know, because it is stone. It, it's hard up there. But otherwise, yeah, you just kneel on the step um, and the the cantor and the organist will be playing the intercessions, the prayers. Normally, we have intercessions for the whole church. Pray for Pope Francis, pray for Bishop Kimmy, uh, pray for our priest, pray for uh, civil leaders, all that. These intercessions are, are directed towards you, okay? Uh, and praying for deliverance of any evil. Um, and I haven't experienced this, because I have, this is my first year in RCIA as well, okay? But I, I've been told that's really beautiful. Um, that our, our kinder does a good job, and we have good music for it. And so um, it's time for you just, just, to, just to pray, right? You're just, you're just kneeling down, and you're asking God, as you hear it sung to you, you're asking God for that deliverance, okay? That being set free of anything that's holding you back from the Lord. So you can truly enter into baptism, okay? Whether you're not baptized yet, or whether you are, already are baptized, to enter into it still. Um, okay, so after... Those are are sunk. You will um, you'll stay kneeling. Father Derek will pray 
get minor exorcism over you. He'll, he'll extend his hands and pray over you, and then he'll dismiss you. Okay. Um, basically, the same order that you came came out of your pews and to the step, you can dismiss from. So starting the center and going out, you can walk out. Um, just like last time, come back here. You'll discuss with, with Kevin and, and Mike and folks. Okay. Um, for preparation for that, your Magnificat. Okay. Actually, let's look up in the Bible here. Give your Bible with you. It's John chapter 4. Great Adventure, 1386. The Scrutinies have a special gospel. So it's normally, if you remember from Kevin's class a long time ago, the readings are on a cycle for Sundays. So we have an A cycle, and then Advent hits again, we have a B cycle, and Advent hits again, we have a C cycle. So that these readings are always show up for the A cycle. Um, but you'll notice that they're not at the other masses this year because we're on the B cycle right now. B as in boy. Okay, so John 4. Everyone see Jesus and the woman of Samaria? That'll be your gospel for Sunday, and it goes all the way to verse 42. It's a whole dialogue. Jesus and this woman that he meets at the well. Um, Samaritans were not um, accustomed to meeting Jews. They were kind of enemies. Samaritans were the pagans. Jews were the, were the chosen people uh, of God. They didn't, they didn't relate. And so I want you just, this is your homework before Sunday, is just to read this through. You may not understand a lot of it. That's okay. Just, you just have some familiarity with what you're going to hear because it's a long story. Okay? Um, and Father Derek will preach on it. Um, and anyway, it, this, is, this is part of the scrutiny is, is hearing this gospel and, and, this, and what's happening in, in this woman's heart. Okay? And being able to um, pray with that. Any questions on the scrutiny for this Sunday? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's going up. You're standing, yeah, with, with a hand on their shoulder. Yep. At the 1130 Mass. So I know it's maybe throwing you guys off a little bit. I wanted to have the, more of the parish experience, RCIA. So it's harder on you guys because you have to remember different mass times every week. But it's, it's cool on, for them because they get to more of the parish. You know, usually a, a parishioner will go to the same mass every week. And so if we do this at different masses, they'll be able to experience it at different masses. You know, people will be able to see a, a scrutiny. Um, so yeah, 11.30 this week. Um, I have it in the email. I sent the schedule. It's 4.30 Saturday the next week. And then 9.30, the, the last one. Okay, awesome. Um, we're just going to do a little bit on sin tonight and the first three commandments. I, I'm giving you more notes than I'm going to go over tonight, so you can maybe read about it more later. We'll start off with a little video. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. So a lot of people will ask me, like, Father, what is a sin? Or what makes something a sin? Because you can say, like, it didn't hurt anybody. Um, it didn't seem like anyone uh, was even affected by some sins at all. That's a great question. So here's the thing. I think a lot of times we think of, like, good and evil as, like, battling it out. Like, here's good and here's evil, and they're just fighting it out. And that sometimes is how we experience it. But... Back in the day, St. Augustine, the 4th, 5th century, he said he figured this kind of thing out. He discerned this. He said that, you know, evil in and of itself isn't a thing. It's either the absence of a thing or the distortion of a thing, right? So the only thing that exists is like good, like goodness, truth, beauty. Those are things that exist. Evil is always going to be an absence of a good or it's the distortion, the willed intentional distortion of a good. So as an example, um, blindness isn't a thing on its own. You have sight, which is a good. Blindness is merely the absence of that good. Or you have the distortion of a good. So for example, communication. 
being able to speak with another person. You can have the absence of that and you can have this isolation, which would not be a good, but you could also distort language. You could distort communication in such a way that it would be telling a lie or would be manipulating someone else. And that would be the misuse of a good. So you see that evil on its own isn't a thing. It's always the absence or it's the intentional misuse or distortion of a good thing. That's why it feels good to sin. In fact, you know, it's kind of funny. The only sin that doesn't have any kind of feeling, good feelings about it is envy. Like every other sin, actually, you get a little kick out of it. You get a little reward out of it. But the one that you don't get a kick out of, the one you don't get a reward out of is envy. It doesn't make anyone feel good ever, but we still do it. That's the whole side point, but I thought I'd mention it. We realize we don't just look around this natural world and see what's good and then figure it out ourselves. We also have this thing called revelation where God reveals to us not just here's what's good and here's what's bad. Even deeper, God reveals his will. God reveals his heart. God is goodness. He's truth. He's beauty. He is mercy. He's justice. He is love. So, of course, whenever we have an absence of those things or intentionally violate those things, intentionally misuse those things, we are sinning. But the most powerful thing is this. When God reveals his will, when he reveals his heart, then all of a sudden sin ceases to be about breaking a rule. It ceases to be about violating some kind of commandment. And all of a sudden it becomes immensely personal. We've all had the occasion where we've accidentally hurt a friend of ours or a friend of ours has accidentally hurt us. You know, there was a real hurt there. But if we understand that it was merely an accident, then we're hurt, but the relationship's still intact. Same principle applies to God. I could accidentally violate a rule. I could accidentally violate a commandment. But when God reveals, okay, this is my will. If I know it's his will and I intentionally choose to do what I want to do anyways, then I'm not just breaking a law. I'm not just breaking a commandment. I'm breaking the relationship. Because ultimately what sin is, is saying, God, I know what you want. I don't care. I want what I want. At the end of the day, that is exactly what sin is. It's not an accident. It's not a mistake. It's not just breaking a rule. It's, God, I know what you want. I, I don't care. I want what I want. Or it's even this, God, I know what you want, and I care about that a lot, but you know what I care about more? <laughs> I want what I want. That's why the opposite of sin, repentance, undoes that. Repentance isn't just saying, oh, I'm sorry, or, or oh, gosh, oh, I feel really bad. That's, it's not. It's not even feeling bad. Your repentance isn't the same thing as regret. Because Judas, he regretted what he had done. Peter regretted what he had done too. Only one of them repented. Because repentance is, God, I know what you want me to do. I know what I've chosen. <sighs> okay, I choose your will now. Now I choose your will. I know what I want. But now I will. I choose what you want. You know, when we say that, when we repent, we turn away from our own will and say, okay, yes to the Father's will. That makes room for God's forgiveness to actually change us. He always wants to forgive us. But when we say, okay, God, not my will, but yours be done, that allows that forgiveness that he's always offering to us to finally meet our hearts. You know, God's will is to forgive you. Did you know that? That God's will is to give you mercy. God's will is to love you. God's will is to set you free from your sins. As long as I say, no, no, my will, not yours be done, I'm not letting him forgive me to experience that forgiveness where he says, okay, I set you free from your debt, to go to confession and simply let him give you the mercy that he already wants to give you. Because that's what you're saying when you go to confession. You're saying, God, I know what you want. You want to give me mercy. You have my permission to give me mercy. And to let that relationship begin to be restored. Because this is the last thing. When you forgive someone, it doesn't automatically restore the relationship. What you have to do is you have to walk forward with them if you want to restore the relationship. I can say, I forgive you from your debt, but I don't want to have a relationship with you anymore. God can say, I forgive you. But if we're going to have a relationship with them, that means, okay, I got to walk forward with them as a forgiven son or daughter of God the Father and walk forward, race forward into life 